I really didn't want to make this video because of the right to strike in the film industry, but I think it's even more crucial now that VFX workers, as you know, we, we don't really have that good of a network around us. We barely get into the credit sometimes. We're on the last line when it comes to production. So therefore, all of the studios that now been canceling productions means that a lot of our fellow brilliant artists is left without a job. Who knows what's going to happen with me? I see a light at the end of the tunnel. There must be. I know for a fact when all of this is done and dusted, we need to rehire a bunch of people and even the grandma probably. As I'm working texturing, I want to reinfuse some positivity into this mess. And actually, I want to start to teach a new breed of texture artists. I want to make this course about how I wanted to learn more in the first place. And I've been doing this for a long time now. This is an opportunity to get into texturing and possibly learn a new trade. Maybe you are a look dev artist that want to just get another perspective on uh, how you can do look dev and, and learn actually the texturing so you can support your look the workflow. All of this we're going to cover in this introduction to Mari series. And obviously I have prepared material for you. You can download the asset here on my Gumroad. So Meshman Studio Gumroad, you will get to this lovely page here. Learn Mari free asset. This is the one that you can Sign up here and download for free here and follow along. And another useful uh, place here is my uh, Discord and I'm gonna link in the description. So for example here, uh, I have just added some uh, information here about uh, the course and also about more non-commercial that we are gonna target here first in the first couple of episodes. And uh, some of the limitations that the non-commercial actually has compared to the full version. And I also encourage you to, I'm gonna link this one as well, the Mori Discord here is also full of great information and a user group here of uh, more users. If you wanna ask this course specific questions, you can do it on my Discord here on the Meshman Studios. On the YouTube courses, and I have here learn more nail asset that's the course you want to go into and add questions or anything here now we want to download mori non-commercial and install it so if you search for mori non-commercial i'm gonna link this also in the video description get to this page here you can sign up and get it you get some information the same as on my page there on the discord so yeah download it and uh, let's jump into mori okay so i've downloaded the material here and put it on my disk here and this is essentially what what uh you get so you have an usd file you have an alembic file and also have a folder here with uh, some uh, extracted uh, textures coming from a photo scan session so let's uh, extract this let's do a folder here and take a look inside so yeah three xr files here next up here we essentially just yes, wanna we can take the abc file here the alembic i'm just gonna copy my address field here. And now we want to create a new project here in Mari. And you can do that either by the file menu here, or you can hit the new button here. In your case, you will probably just have nuke default color settings because it's a non-commercial. And if you're on a commercial, you will have the ability to choose, for example, ACES, different ACES. Or if you would have an OCIO config, you could set up a custom OCIO. But we are targeting non-commercial in this uh, few episodes here in the beginning. So I'm just gonna stick to nuke default color management. Then I'm gonna go here to my geometry and, and browse here using this button here. And I'm just gonna paste where I had my resources. We can either go USD or ABC. Let's just take this ABC first. And that's the Alembic and hit open. We can uh, can do both actually, Alem Snail Alembic. So I, I named the project Snail Alembic and just hit create new project here. I'm gonna just quickly here go to default layout. So this is essentially what you should be greeted with if this is the first time you open Mari. And uh, here is the asset. You have a um, UV view. So this is where you can inspect the UVs. Uh, so we have three UDIMs and a UDIM is essentially the image 
So you have numbers here, 1001, 2, 3, and it goes up to 10, and then you will get the next row if you have on a commercial. As this is a uh, non-commercial, you will only be able to load, uh, was it five or six UDIMs? So that's the limitation. You have a perspective view. With the perspective view, you can go in here and, uh, for example here, set the field of view. Yeah, like a camera field of view. This is super funky. I never really use uh, perspective that often. I'm mainly in orthographic view when I paint. If you right click here, you can go to display properties and customize. For example, if you want to have another background color, you can uh, do this here. If you want to have a, like a darker, darker color, go to display properties. So right click display properties. So here's a lot of settings for your display here essentially um, i'm mainly going in here and, and customizing what type of background color that's the main thing that i go in and, and customize here really take the same for both up and down so we get some kind of flash shaded okay and on this side here you have tabs you can also hit this arrow uh, so you can either have a uh, minimized if you remember what everything is here or you can maximize it and, and get a bit of a tooltip you can drag around tabs here so you can customize you can even hit the x on the, all of this and actually take everything away and start to customize whatever you want node graph here for example this is the real power of mari and the new graph. This is where all of the fun stuff happens. Compared to Painter, where you have everything in layers, the new graph is much more flexible and opens up a lot of more non-linear workflows that kind of have to struggle with when you have layers. And that's quite easy to do when you have uh, nodes. Let's close this and open quickly here a new project. The same setting, new default geometry. I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna take this USD here and see here. Let's see what happens. Your load options looks a bit different here. Yeah, you can load the USD. So I'm just gonna create phase selection group per mesh. I can't remember if I have phase selections on this one. Create new project here as well. And there we have the USD. If I shift W, uh, you can get the wireframe. And so you can see here what type of uh, mesh we have. Um, you can also subdivide geometry here. So that's something, especially when we have uh, USD. As USD is uh, from Pixar and Open Subdiv is also from Pixar, you can subdivide the geometry here. This, this will use Open Subdiv smoothing. So that's really good if you want to, for example, visualize this model with subdivision. You can go here to your object. I'm just going to dock my object here so we can see here when I dock something. I'm going to rescale this now and go to my geometry here and let's see subdivision. And we can see here when I flip down from zero to one, you can kind of see, especially here on the head here. Let's see here that you can see now. And this one will using the same type of subdivision, for example, that Render Man and other render engines use uh, usually nowadays. So open subdiv. On this side here, you have a lot of um, tools. Uh, for example, you can select patches, for example. You have here patch selection. This one will then isolate a single UDIM. As we know here, UV, this is a UDIM, this one. You can work on, for example, the head. So we can uh, shift H will essentially hide everything except this one. Control shift H will uh, bring everything back again. So let's try to shift H, isolate this one. Control shift H brings it back again. And this one shift H, control shift. So that's, uh, that's an option. You can also select face mode here. And this one will actually now select faces here. So now we can see here if we select these faces and you can now, let's say shift H, you will only see these faces. So that can sometimes be something you want to do when your patch selection doesn't really cut it. If you double click, it will blood fill the selection depending on this option here, connected mesh. 
it will take all of the connected essentially mesh components. But if you want to target, this is something I usually go connected mesh or connected UV. Connected UV will look into the underlying uh, UV. Essentially, essentially, you see isolate these islands here. Uh, so that's something you might want to do sometimes. You just want to work on a single UV island. You might want to shift age and then just work on this one in isolation uh, and paint and then you can bring it back like so okay so before we wrap this episode where we just barely scratch the surface i'm gonna get it back to all of this uh, more in depth in the coming episodes i just want to look at navigation obviously you need to tumble around zoom in and uh, do all of this jazz so alt button and left you essentially tumble around the object you have uh, middle alt and middle mouse you kind of pan around the alt and right click you zoom in and out you also have different views so one two three four five up to six it's your different like orthographic views if that makes sense in the next one i'm gonna take a deeper look at this tab here and dissect all of these drop downs and what have you there's a lot to go through and after that we're actually gonna start to texture this guy possibly get it into houdini later on stay positive happy painting